Five press conference. Uh, for those that are joining us on the live stream, we welcome you as well. We're still inside here at Long Beach Arena, Long Beach, California. Great to be here. Great crowd tonight. We're going to open it up for uh, opening remarks and questions here momentarily. Those members of the press, if you have questions, if you could formulate those, we'll be coming to you here just momentarily. For the other folks that are joining us here at the uh, post-fight press conference, uh, we welcome you as well. Come on in. We will uh, kick it off right now with opening comments and then throw it to the members of the press. With those opening comments, uh, we'll turn it over to the CEO and chairman of Bellator MMA, Mr. Ewan Thanks, Mike. Uh, I, I typically will uh, be asked to
against it. Just a world-class kickboxer who's won world title after world title, and you looked unbelievable tonight. So congratulations on a big win. I want to say thanks, Bern, for many chances for me. Uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I want to... Майка с победой, отличный бой. И хочу извиниться перед Берном, перед Билатором, перед тренером и менеджером за то, что э, столько шансов дают и у меня не получается. Здесь крайне не везет. Э, но мне очень приятно, что американские э, ну, болельщики меня очень хорошо и тепло принимают. Может быть, они чувствуют энергетику, которую я им передаю. И если возможно вернуться, я с удовольствием вернусь еще сильнее и еще лучше. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, congratulate Mike with, a, with this great win. It was a great fight, I think. And um, I also would like to apologize in front of Belter, uh, Bjorn, my coach, my manager, and all the fans, because uh, Belter keeps giving me chances, and I just cannot uh, uh, take them. Uh, <clears throat> so I apologize for that. Uh, however, if I would be given another chance to uh, stay in Belter, I would uh, do everything uh, possible to uh, you know, showcase uh, the best of my skills, uh, because what I really enjoy and what I really like, I think that uh, here in the US when I fight, the, the public, the audience, uh, they really greet me really warmly. They, I don't know, maybe they just uh, like the energy that I bring or something, but it's really a great pleasure for me to fight here. So uh, thank you very much, guys, and uh, I will come back much stronger next time. Thank you. First off, I want to th thank ACOP. Um, I knew when I was told I was going to fight him that it was just going to be a, a lights out, exciting a fight. Uh, I want to thank Bjorn and Bellator for uh, having me on the, the, the main card of you know the biggest show uh, that Bellator has thrown. Um, I hope you know I hope the fans enjoyed it. I knew you know we were two strikers coming out to put on a, an exciting fight and uh, I wasn't going to back down, he wasn't going to back down, we were both hungry um, and we just weren't going to let you guys down and I hope you enjoyed it. Absolutely. Hey, um, Joe, remember the conversation we had when, uh, when Five Masters started? He said stick with it and this will be a great road back for you and you can do it and the cuts will be vicious and it will be awful and painful and you'll make it back, and you'll be on a big stage and be able to get back in the hunt for a world title. And congratulations, this was a great performance. Mike Brunzel is a um, tough, tough fighter. He's going to be back in this organization, going to be putting on great fights, brings the fight, put on a great show for us tonight. Um, but, Joe, congratulations. I could not be happier for you, dude. Congrats. Yeah.
before the uh, we had a difficult year, and before that year, Daniel Strauss, I don't know how many of you recognize it, but Daniel Strauss was ranked in the top seven in the world on most people's list, an unbelievably talented fighter. <laughs> Had a tough run and had a difficult last 12 months and came back just unbelievably focused. Pat Curran, who's not here with us right now, had to go to the hospital. Um, he is, in my mind, has been for some time one of the top two to three featherweights on the face of the earth. And for Daniel Strauss to come out after that kind of a break and haven't endured the hardships he's endured and to win that fight the way he did, it's just a huge congratulations to an incredibly well-deserving guy who now holds our featherweight strap. So, Daniel, congratulations. <laughs> First off, um, before I even get into anything, I just want to thank uh, Bellator and Buman for uh, supporting me, uh, believing me, and uh, you know, not being one of those uh, type of organizations or type of people that uh, turn their back on you know such a good guy. You know, I've had a tough break. Um, it's no secret. It doesn't bother me. Like I said, it, uh, in a couple of interviews, it doesn't bother me. Bother me how people feel about me. I mean, I know what type of person I am. I'm a winner, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm a fighter, you know, and I'm going to continue to fight. Uh, since day one, I've been waiting to get a belt, you know, and uh, I'm here now, and I'm going to continue to be here. And uh, I just want to thank you all for coming out and uh, supporting me and supporting everybody else here, and, uh, you know, thank you. sitting to my left, and Emmanuel Newton is somebody that um, it is very much like a Daniel Strauss, very much like a Pat Kern, a Michael Chandler, um, guys that we found, guys who've got incredible, incredible talent, and we're able to use this system that we have, the tournament system, the objectivity, um, to propel themselves to new heights, and didn't get put behind somebody, didn't get stuck in a kind of a golden boy system, um, and, you know, a lot of people... When, when King Mo and Emmanuel Newton fought the first time, a lot of people said it was the upset of the year. Um, I was not one of those people. I thought that Emmanuel Newton was a world-class light heavyweight fighter and that anybody that he got inside of a cage with would have significant problems with him. Um, so it comes as no shock to me that he was able to come back and win this fight again. Um, and it will have a unification bout against Attila Vegg coming up the next season on Spike in probably four to five months. So congratulations on a huge, huge win. And King Mo, an amazingly talented fighter, one of the best personalities and best guys that we've got in our game, and he will be back as well. Uh, first off, you know, i got to thank my uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, without him, I wouldn't have this victory. You know, I wouldn't have these skills to be so uh, technical and unorthodox. You know, and I believe, you know, that's really what won me the fight. You know, um, yeah, Mo is an amazing wrestler. He's on, arms are long and his hands are huge and I'm like how is he grabbing me like this you know it's crazy you know but I, I just kept pushing forward you know um, I knew that you know, being a more technical striker and being unorthodox and keeping him thinking uh, you know is, I think is what really won the fight for me but you know I just want to thank Bjorn you know Bellator you know just for, for having me and allowing me to uh, you know to be on this huge card and I want to thank Mo for uh, allowing you know stepping up to the to plate again to, to, to fight me you know and, um, and you know I'm, I'm elated right now I'm so happy um, it's like a dream it's just like I don't know, it's like Twilight Zone for me right now, you know, lights shine everybody, you know, but uh, but I'm just, I'm really happy, and I'm going to continue to, to train and, and, and get better, and, uh, you know, I think I fought one of the, you know, the best wrestler in the sport, you know, so uh, I don't know what Attila's going to do to me, because uh, I'm, I'm coming for him, so thank you. Uh, you know, I'd like to give a shout-out to him, man, I'm um, good victory. Personally, you know, I thought I won... Rounds one, four, and five, but uh, you know the judges saw a different way, so it is what it is. I'm just gonna bounce back in the tournament and get my title shot again, you know. Um, and things happen, and uh, you know, all I can do is move forward and uh, get my shot back. Thank y'all. To those that may have just joined us in the live stream, we're still on site here at Long Beach Arena, of course in Long Beach, California. You've heard from the fighters and from uh, Bjorn, so let's open it up, members of the press. Any questions? We'll start with your first question, gentlemen, right here. 
Thank you. Uh, Jonathan King from theclinchreport.com. Um, my first question is for Joe Riggs. Uh, Joe, coming off a of fight master, seasoned veteran. Uh, tonight, your movement seemed to be the difference in the fight. You seemed to transition really well. Um, was that something that you recognized in the game plan? Was footwork something from the beginning that you thought was going to win you this fight? Uh, yeah, I thought it was faster. You know, that was one of the things I was better at. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I planned on striking the one, standing up and using you know, my, my, my fast hands. But I cut the second round and blood started getting in my eye and it kind of changed things for me. So, you know, I kind of wanted to, I had to you know, go to the ground where I felt more safe. But, um, you know, in the beginning, yeah, definitely that was the plan. Thank you. Um, my next question is for uh, ACOP. ACOP, uh, it appeared that uh, you thought that that stoppage was a little quick. Um, is, is that what you thought? Did you, did you think that you, you were still aware and were looking to continue the fight? Because you appeared to look up at the referee as if you were confused to the stoppage. Thank you, Sichas. Надо было поменять, вернуть время обратно и посмотреть, что было бы, если бы не остановили. Так не могу ничего сказать, потому что, может быть, я пролежал бы, еще там, ну, перетерпел бы и поднялся, может быть, и он добил. Frankly speaking, it is hard for me uh, to tell right now, uh, because uh, I have to, I keep going back to that moment and thinking what would happen. What would have happened if the fight wouldn't have been stopped? Uh, maybe I would, you know, survive that barrage of punches. Maybe I would be able to recover. Maybe not. Uh, but we would never know now. So. Thank you. A question for Bjorn. Um, do you have any preliminary idea of what's going on with Mike Chandler right now? What he was transported to the hospital for? Just a general checkup, or is there anything specific? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I went back and talked to Mike and talked to Ed right after the fight, and they both, um, I mean, you, you saw the fight. Um, and Ed was able to make it to the press conference. The doctors were suggesting that Ed went right to the hospital as well, but he wanted to come out and, and say some things, which is, you know, great. Um, and Mike wanted to come as well, but it's just, I mean, that's a, you know, I, I don't know what else to say other than you saw the fight. You know, I mean, it, it's, you know, that's tough. Um, prior to the fight, Eddie said that you guys hadn't spoken um, in quite some time. Um, how is it being in the cage with him after he won the fight and just sitting next to him and talking to him? Um, before, before we, you know, Ed and I had the issue that we had. Um, I said it many times. We had, we had a good relationship, you know, and I know it got, um, to a certain extent, got dragged through the mud. But I, I like Ed a lot. I had I had an amazing amount of respect for Ed after seeing what I saw tonight. I mean, the level of respect has gone up 10, 20 fold. His, his, his ability inside the cage is just unbelievable. I mean, he's, I, he's one of the greatest lightweights in MMA, and his courage and his heart is just unparalleled. Um, it wasn't uncomfortable. I mean, I spent four years talking to him regularly, and we saw each other, and it just kind of the wall came down when we saw each other and said, "Hey," and it was, it was pretty easy, you know. Now my question is for Daniel Strauss. Daniel, can you talk about coming off more than a year layoff, especially after you've been such an active fighter? How were you able to not show any ring rust at all? I mean, you went five rounds and you looked real good. Your timing was on, and I think it surprised everybody. Um, I've said it a couple times over and over. Uh, ring ring rust is just mental. You know what I mean? I have a job to do, and I'm a fighter. You know, and I know how to fight. And uh, so that's all I was coming in here to do is fight. Um, you know, obviously, the lights aren't there when you're off uh, for a year, and the fans aren't all there when you're off for a year. But as far as fighting, that's always there. You know what I mean? So I never got outside that box. You know, so coming back inside the cage, it was like it was yesterday. Also, I noticed a big celebration from the guys at ATT. And can you talk about what that this belt means for them, and uh, also for yourself winning it for them? For me, I think it it's. 
I think it's more important for me to win it for ATT. I mean, not just ATT, um, but uh, bringing the belt home, uh, bringing the belt to them. Uh, to me, just you know, it's a it's a blessing. You know, there's a lot of hard knocks guys down there. There's a lot of good coaching down there. There's a lot of good guys down there. And for me to be the guy that can bring a belt to that or, or to that uh, team, uh, it just it's a heads up. You know, uh, to get to where I'm at with this title behind me. It's been a lot of people that's worked really hard, not just myself. You know, I've had a lot of people work really hard with me, you know, and, uh, and I want to thank all of them. And I got one last question for Mike Bronzoulis. Uh, Joe Riggs mentioned in the post-fight interview that he heard or you may have had a, a back injury. Can you elaborate on that a little? Yeah, and, I, and I don't mean to put you in a, in a position to make an excuse, but I he put it out there, so I was curious. No, it's no excuse. I mean, it's known in 2004. I was hit by a Ford Expedition as a pedestrian, and uh, I wasn't able to walk for six months. The doctors tell me I never play sports, and I've got disc problems in my neck and my back. Uh, I was training, and it went out, and I had to get injections for this fight. But, uh, you know, I was I was okay. You know, that's not what lost me in the fight. Joe was better tonight, you know. He got me. But, yeah, I've had some problems with that. Yeah. Right, my question is for Mo. Uh, Mo, you mentioned you'd be back in the tournament. Um, should you su- successfully navigate the tournament? Are you kind of hoping that Emmanuel's there at the end for you, or are you done with that? Uh, it makes no difference in there. My goal is to get the belt. Um, if Emmanuel has it, that's cool with me. I'll fight him again. If they got it, I'll fight Vey. I don't care who got it. My goal is to get that belt. Thank you. Next question. Yarn, I just wanted to know, will there be a, a runner match immediately between Chandler and Alvarez, or is he going to have to go back through the tournament? Um, I, you know what? It's funny. You'd think that that would be the first thing I'd be thinking about immediately after the fight. Um, Great question. It wasn't. I'm still in a bit of awe in terms of what those two guys did. Um, I mean, it, obviously now it's 1-1. And it, literally, in my mind, it's the two best fights I've ever seen. And it just so happens it's between two guys. I mean, sometimes you just get that magic. Um, you know I mean? In boxing, God, he had it with Ward. You know what I mean? And just two guys who match each other so beautifully in terms of their skill set that they could give you just, um, a, a, you know, violent artistry inside the cage. And they do. Those two guys match each other beautifully. So, um, yeah, I mean, we would absolutely, I would do it again. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. First and foremost, Mike's got to get well. Ed's got to get well. They've got to get a clean bill of health. They've got to have some time to recuperate because that's um, that's an incredibly taxing situation to put your body through um, and your mind. But once they're physiologically ready to get back in, yeah, I, I would do that again in a heartbeat. That's unbelievable what, what I saw tonight. So, yeah, sure. Bjorn over here. Um, I was actually going to ask about the, the third fight with Chandler and, and Alvarez, but just to follow up, what are your options for that? I mean, is that a fight you can make just right now? Is that is there anything impediment in the way of that fight happening? No, uh, there isn't. Um, other than just the two of them being 120% healthy, um, you know, I think part of the magic that we were able to, that we, that they were able to create tonight was based on the fact that Ed had a, a long period off and was able to heal and, and kind of recreate what he does and what he's done so well. Michael got a lot of time off, and Michael had a couple of title defenses, but they were short order title defenses. He took no damage. But that's the kind of fight you're going to need to take some time off from. But once they're both back 120%, nothing, there's nothing in the way of doing number three, which would be unbelievable. Uh, for, for Daniel, um, well, the question's for you, Bjorn. But, uh, are you going to do a rematch? I mean, is the current fight the kind of fight you want to do a rematch on, or are you going to wait for a challenger to come up next? You know, Pat's been unbelievable, and Daniel did everything that I thought Daniel could do when Daniel was ranked in the top ten and came back and put on an amazing performance. I'd have to go back and look at it. I mean, we do have the championship rematch clause, and that was a great back-and-forth tough fight. Um, But I'd want to take a look at it before I would say, you know, which way we would go um, in terms of Pat, if Daniel and Pat would rematch or somebody else would step in and fight Daniel or how it would work. But um, I would want to take a look at that before making a decision on it. Your next question. The 
first season of Five Master wrapped up tonight. Um, can you tell us what to look forward to in the next season? Um, that's a great question. You know, we'll see. I mean, right now, my hyper focus right now is on um, finishing out this amazing season. You know, obviously next week we've got the heavyweight final with Congo fighting Graham, and we've got Joe Warren fighting, and then Rampage is going to fight for us two weeks from tonight at Revel against Joey Beltran for as long as that lasts should be an unbelievable fight. So everything right now is focused on that. But, um, you know, when you get just – it's a great mechanism. I mean, it's a great mechanism, and it follows our system. And you get you know, a guy like Joe Riggs that can recreate his career and, and kickstart, you know, something that could be magic out of that. So, you know, we'll see. A question for uh, Bjorn, this is Dan the Wolfman. Um, you kind of touched on it already, but just to follow up, what do you think – is next for Eddie Alvarez will it be a tournament winner, or we'll be looking at uh, you know the the rubber match, the third fight, and if you guys do go ahead with the pay per view in the future, is that you know a main or co-main type fight, just like it was supposed to be tonight? Uh, you know, I mean, I, look, I'm I'm tired, so I'm probably not making as much sense as I would typically make, but um, I don't know how it isn't. I mean, literally, I've seen. I think you and I have even talked about it. I've seen more MMA fights than most human beings in the world. There's probably a handful of people in the world who have seen more MMA fights live than I have. And that's the best fight and the second best fight I've ever seen. Um, so, you know, I, I don't... My mindset would not jump back into, okay, well, let's see who wins the next tournament and is going to fight Ed. I mean, Michael Chandler and Ed are just... They're just the razor's edge apart in terms of who dominates a given fight. Ed could easily have won the last fight in the third round the first fight that they did, and then Ed ended up losing it in the fourth, and, and Ed could have gotten finished in this fight, and Michael could have gotten finished in this fight. I mean, it's just, you, you can't you can't script fights like that. So, I, I don't, I mean, my thinking would be first and foremost concern is Michael's health and Ed's health, and when they're 100% ready to go, I would look at that fight um, as the third in a trilogy and do it on, I'd do it wherever we would do it. I mean, pay-per-view would surely be an alternative for it. It was awesome. Do you think it's even a benefit, possibly, that more free eyeballs have seen these great fights, where now it even sells the pay-per-view even more if, it, if that ends up happening? Well, sure. I mean, you know, look, there's, I try to look on the, the bright side of things in terms of turning negatives into positives, and the fact that uh, millions of fans got an opportunity on Spike TV to watch this fight for free tonight as a main event, getting all the pomp and circumstance, which it absolutely deserved, and then delivered on in, you know, you know, 20-fold. Um, yeah, I think that's great. I mean, that's a win-win. That's what you want to see. You know, if somebody had come to me and said, I'll give you a 1,000 to 1 odds that Alvarez Chandler 2 is as good, if not better, than Alvarez Chandler 1, I would have, uh, you know, I mean, that's a bet you take because those kind of fights don't duplicate themselves. And this fight duplicated itself, and I would dare say, and I haven't seen it because I've watched the first one like 45 times, and I could call out things like Rocky Horror Picture Show in the first fight right when they're, before they're going to happen. But, I mean, it, I, I would, just based on what I saw, I think this was a better fight than the first one. So, I mean, that's just, that's crazy. How often does that happen? So, yeah, I mean, I just, first and foremost, God willing, they're both okay, fine, can get back, can rest, gain some well-deserved weight, relax, see their families, and then we can talk about when we can do number three. Thank you. Uh, next question, uh, Real Combat Media, thank you. Uh, for Emmanuel Newton, congratulations this evening. Um, the question is, we notice that you're really a really emotionally fed fighter. It seems like you really feed off the emotions of not only your opponent, but the crowd. Um, King Mo, you know, giving you a lot more uh, emotionality to feed off in this fight. Is he really like the tailor-made perfect opponent for you to be able to defeat, given the way that you fight with your emotionality and your energy? Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, uh, if my opponent's, you know, a trash talker, you know, or is in my face all the time, you know, or, or if, you know, if they're passive, you know, like I am, you know, I'm coming to fight either way. But I definitely uh, wanted to, you know, I was getting tired of, of hearing, you know, who said what and what said who, you know. So I definitely wanted to, to, to you know, put a stamp on this fight, um, you know, with the decision, you know. But, uh, you know, but I, I think, you know, I definitely landed a lot better strikes, you know, I had him, I had him. You know, and his knees wobbly a couple of times, you know, yeah, of course, the wrestling. But, I mean, I think uh, that's something the judges should look at, too. You know, if, if the guy's main goal is to take the person down and the guy keeps getting back up and he finally starts defending the takedowns, you know, that's, you know, that that's was his main goal. And I stopped it, you know, then, uh, you know, I think that's, that's it's a big part, too, you know. So, you know, but, uh, you know, my striking definitely shines. So, but it doesn't matter, you know, if, if the guy's a trash talker or not, you know, I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm just here to fight. Thank you.
CJ Tuttle, SB Nation. Um, my question is two parts for Riggs and Bjorn. Um, I know B, uh, Riggs is supposed to enter into the tournament, supposedly, now that he will correct. Okay. I was asking about potentially a matchup between him and Cristiano Souza, who was also victorious earlier tonight, whether that's something going down the line that we could expect them obviously ends of the spectrum. Yeah, you know, I mean, look, right now the, the, the run that Joe Riggs is on is one that is um, – short order over 90 days to get um, a shot at a world title at 170 pounds in this organization. So, um, you know, we don't we do not do an amazing amount of matchmaking. So, it, um, you know, that fight could conceptually happen, but right now we're looking at a, we're looking at a winner start at 170 for the, for the eight-man tournament. He'll be in it. He will be incredibly tough to beat. He's fighting at a level that, you know, may be better than any level he's ever fought at. He's fought at the highest level in the world. So, um, we'll see how he does in that tournament, and then, um, you know, we'll see. Those two could conceptually meet in a tournament at some point, but right now, um, he's got an eight-man coming up in about four and a half months. JPEG later on, MMA Fight Radio Phoenix. This question for Joe Riggs. Uh, Joe, you fought at the top of the mountain in the UFC. You fought for a title there. How do you think this fight and your time on Fightmaster has kick-started your career, and where do you think it goes from here as a result of winning? Um, I matured really late in my life. <laughs> um, so, you know, when I, was a, when I was a kid in the UFC, I wasn't, I wasn't mentally ready for anything that might happen. I think now, you know, I, I'm married and I have kids. I know what I'm fighting for. You know, it's, it's just all different. So, you know, when, yeah, I, I'm with, uh, you know, I'm with the MMA lab and John Crouch and guys like Ben Henderson. And, you know, they're real good people in my, in my life. So, it's, it's you know, everything's completely different, you know. Like like Bjorn said, I'm fighting on a different level, and yeah, my mind was a huge uh, stumbling block for me when I was younger, and um, that's not a problem anymore. So I'm going to be tough to beat. I'm going to I'm going to go in the tournament, and, um, win that. I'm going to fight for the belt, and win that. So I'm really really confident. I'm going to be all ready to beat. So I'm excited. Joe, we've got time for one last question, if we have it. All right, gentlemen, your last question. Josh Molina with Sci Fighting. King Bo was a pretty close fight. I think that a lot of people thought it could go either way. Emmanuel Newton just said he felt like your legs were wobbly in the fight. Were you ever in trouble? Were you ever hurt? Uh, can you tell us how you felt from your perspective? Uh, to be honest with you,